Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about non-homogeneous differential equations. So in earlier lectures, we talked about homogeneous linear differential equations, right? So for example, when the right side is zero, when this is zero, then we call that this is a second order linear homogeneous differential equation. And then we saw that how does the general solution, if y is any solution to this differential equation, then we saw that how does the general solution looks like and what was the answer if you recall the answer was it is linear combination of two linearly independent solutions so if y1 and y2 are two linearly independent solutions to this differential equation then the general solution is c1 y1 plus c2 y2 so this was the case for second order for third order if you have three linearly independent solution then the general solution is the linear combination of those three linearly independent solution. Similarly for fourth order you will find four linearly independent solutions. Take the linear combination that is the general solution and the same thing goes on for nth order homogeneous linear differential equation. But now the question is if you have the right hand side to be non-zero that means when you have a term that does not involve the dependent variable or its derivatives. Okay, so you have a term involving only x that means term involving only independent variable. So when you have such kind of differential equations then we call this is a non-homogeneous linear differential equation. Now the question is how will the general solution of this equation will look like. Okay, so this is for second order the same question is if I have a third order y triple prime plus p of x into y double prime plus q of x into y prime plus h of x into y equal to r of x. So if I have a third order non-homogeneous linear differential equation, how will the general solution will look like? Similarly for fourth order and so on. Well, the answer lies in a very nice result. So instead of giving you the answer directly, let us try to arrive at the answer. Okay. So let y be any general solution. Let y be any general solution to this equation 1. Let me call this as equation 1. My aim is how does this y will look like for homogeneous I know it is c1 y1 plus c2 y2 for second order where y1 and y2 are linearly independent question is how this y will look like for non homogeneous that's what our aim is okay so let y be any general solution and let y p of x be a particular solution to 1 y p means it's a particular solution that's why p that means you have a solution to this equation and that solution does not involve arbitrary constant. It involves some fixed constant. That means here you don't have C in the picture. So you don't have arbitrary constant. So this is a particular solution of this. That means what? Y will satisfy this equation and YP also satisfy this differential equation. Now you consider Y minus YP. So what do you think what this will give you? Y minus YP double prime plus p of x into y minus yp prime plus q of x into y minus yp question is what is this equal to so let's try to expand this and let's try to see what do we get so i have written down the setup so this is our equation one this is equal to zero i'm calling this as equation two what is equation two this is a homogeneous linear differential equation corresponding to equation one so whenever a differential equation is given to you, you put this equal to zero. Then this is called as a homogeneous linear differential equation corresponding to equation one. Now what our aim is, we want to see if y is a solution, general solution of equation one, yp is a particular solution of equation one, then what can you say about y minus yp? Well, the answer is if you just take the de derivative, this is y double prime minus yp double prime plus p y prime minus p y p prime plus q y minus q y p. Now if you take out the terms, if you rearrange the terms y double prime plus p y prime plus q y minus y p double prime plus p y p prime plus q y p. This is what we have. But y is what? y is the general solution to this. That means y will satisfy this equation. So what is y double prime plus p y prime plus q y? This is nothing but your r of x minus. 
what is yp it is also the solution of equation 1 so your yp will also satisfy this differential equation so what is this equal to this is equal to again r of x which is 0 so subtraction of two solution of equation 1 is a solution to equation 2 that means your y minus yp is satisfying your y minus yp this function is satisfying equation 2 that means your y minus yp is a general solution to equation 2 but what is equation 2 it is homogeneous linear differential equation and we know that how does a general solution to such type of differential equation looks like so if this is a general solution of equation 2 this has to be of the form c1 y1 plus c2 y2 where what are y1 y2 y1 y2 are linearly independent solutions to equation 2 so therefore if i it is this part so my y minus yp so my y of x let me take yp on the right hand side it is c1 y1 x plus c2 y2 x plus yp of x so this is what my answer is or this is what our answer is we took y to be any general solution of equation 1 and our aim was how does this y look like the answer is it is c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus yp where y1 and y2 are linearly independent solution to the homogeneous part and yp is some particular solution to equation 1 so you keep on changing c1 c2 you get all possible solutions okay so whenever you have a non-homogeneous differential equation you first write down the step one you write down the corresponding homogeneous differential equation for homogeneous you know how to find y1 and y2 by the earlier techniques that we have seen and once we have this you find yp so ultimately our first question was how does the general solution to equation one looks like ultimately boils down to find yp because we know this how to find this is the solution to the homogeneous part so we know this how to find we now our aim is how to find yp and to find yp there are two methods that you are going to study method of undetermined coefficients and method of variation of parameters okay i'm going to talk about both the methods in detail in my next lecture for that also you can find the link in the description so these are the two methods that will help you to find yp okay that's one thing now i will come back to these methods now one point here someone can raise let's see we know how to find y1 y2 with the help of auxiliary equation and all and yp is what it is some particular solution now suppose by using the method suppose if i find some yp and this is what the general solution i will write and you will find some other yp because yp is what it is some particular solution so i will find some yp then this is what my general solution is suppose you find some yp then for your the general solution will be c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus suppose you are calling your yp as uh, let me call say uh, y o x that means you are finding some this is also a particular solution okay just i'm giving a different name so are they equal so here you can see they are not equal okay so if i am finding some yp which is a solution of one you are finding some another particular solution to equation one then as per the theory i will write this as the general solution and you will write this as the general solution are they same answer is yes how come there is a very nice theorem that says once you have the general solution c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus yp you keep on changing c1 c2 you get all possible solution okay so that is one collection for this you get one collection of all possible solutions how do you get that you keep on changing c1 c2 for this also you get one collection of solution sets right you keep on changing c1 c2 and you add it up and you get one collection all possible solutions here also you have all possible solutions there is a theorem that these two sets are equal so even if i am getting one particular solution you are getting other particular solution this may look like different but when you keep on changing c1 c2 that collection of solutions and for this collections of solutions both the sets are equal so ultimately there is nothing different we are getting the same set of solutions 
okay so ultimately coming back to the original question so to find the general solution it ultimately boils down to find yp now how to find yp there are two methods as i said method of undetermined coefficients method of variation of perimeter now both have its own pros and cons okay for method of undetermined coefficients there are some positive points and negative points and for method of variation of parameter there are some positive points and some negative points once you see those methods no you will realize that but just let me give you a brief idea okay so if you are using method of undetermined coefficients when you see this method this method is applicable only to the differential equation of this type y double prime plus a y prime plus b y equal to r of x that means my a and b are constants so when the left hand side is constant and the right hand side is a continuous functions of x then only you can apply this method if here you are having variables coefficients then you can't apply this method that is the first drawback second drawback is once you see the method there is a table which you will see and here you have to choose some yp by looking at that table and once you choose yp you have to solve for that yp that's what the method says so when you want to choose yp there are some restrictions like if you have exponential function or if you have trigonometry function if you have polynomial function or if you have the product of exponential and trigonometry when you have this kind of choices on the right hand side then you can choose yp and then you can solve but if you have something other than this like trigonometry in trigonometry as well if you have sin and cos you can use this method but if there is some tan x or cot x then is difficult is you can't apply this method or if you have some functions which does not fall into this category you can't apply this method so these are the two drawbacks what is the plus point the plus point is once you choose yp solving is very easy because you have to take derivatives and you have to do some stuff so once you choose yp things are pretty much easy so not a problem so there is a very good plus point of this method the second method is variation of parameter method variation of parameter see once you start seeing this method no you will realize this plus and minus point what i'm saying but i just want to give you the feel that's why i thought of talking about it here itself the here to find yp this method gives you the actual formula that how to find yp here you have to choose yp here they give you the actual formula to find the yp so your job of choosing gets reduced over here okay directly you apply the formula your job is done the second plus point here is here like the restriction was the coefficients has to be constant here there is no such restriction even if the coefficients are variable the the continuous functions of x on the left hand side then also you can apply this method that is the second plus point the negative point over here is the formula involves integration okay so like here it it in the procedure involves derivative and derivatives are easy to solve but here in the formula you integration comes into picture and trust me integrations are not that always easy to solve so that's one i will say kind of drawback for this method okay so we see a differential equation and see which method to apply okay so if you see any of the terms on the right hand side and the constant coefficients my suggestion is you prefer this method if there is a variable coefficients you go for variation because you can't apply this method and on the right hand side if you see other than this then also you go for variation of parameter and if you see any one of this and such kind of differential equation then go by this method so that's what all about non homogeneous linear differential equation is in the next lecture i will talk about these two methods separately so i hope this is clear if yes do not forget to like share and subscribe and if you have any doubt then you can ask me in the comment section thank you